And welcome back, my fellow lost souls, to the town of Silent Hill in Silent Hill 2. Last time, we finished up all our business in the Woodside Apartments and broke into the Blue Creek Apartments. This time around, we're going to finish up our business here and hopefully finally get to that park that may or may not be the specialist place that James has been thinking of. Between this video and the last, I have adjusted the color settings on my TV so that I can actually see what the heck I'm doing, so when I turn the flashlight off, I should be able to actually uh, pass by enemies this time around. Uh, when I was bumbling past them in the previous video, I actually had to look at the recording window a couple times because it's a little bit brighter than what my TV was. With that all said and done, we have this cabinet here, and this is our first real puzzle of the game, one that can't just be solved with trial and error. I mean, theoretically you could, but uh, your odds of getting it just by doing that are pretty low. First lies the seat of he who is peerless, silent and empty, heartless and fearless. Beside him sits one who knows the place of the servant is next to the throne. Dozens of feet, yet not a single toe. The one that is hidden beside him doth go. Seducer of dreams, creature of Hades, lying further from man and closer to lady. Man and woman seeing all, heedless to the raven's call. Silent and hidden the two may be, they, may, they be not there for you to see. Return them to whence they would be, and blessing shall descend on thee. I speak thus with the north star behind me. The birth of the sun is the star of the story. So, we've got a bit of a long-form poem there, and on the cabinet itself there are five divots. Hey, those uh, one-inch depressions, uh, looks like uh, they could fit those coins we've been picking up. Now let's take a closer look at those coins. We've gotten three of them, of course. Actually, you know what? I'm going to heal myself up real quick. I probably should be doing that more often. Uh, your health level actually does have an influence on the endings that you get in this game, and I'd like to uh, get the one that is uh, gotten by having your health uh, being at a higher level than what I'm keeping it at. Or at least that's one of the factors that influences it. Anyways, going over the coins we've got, we've got the coin of the snake. We've got the coin of the old man, and we've got the coin of the prisoner. Coin of the prisoner is helpful to uh, examine because uh, James will remark that the prisoner seems to be a woman. So uh, already you can see how some of these things are relating to stuff in that poem, such as, you know, a dozen of feet but no toes. That, of course, is referring to a snake. Uh, the snake close to the lady, so that obviously is referring to the prisoner. For the process of elimination, that means that any other clue that we can deem has to uh, refer to the old man. So we're going to start. Now, one important thing to pay attention to is the very first uh, part of the poem. Uh, first is the one who is uh, peerless, silent, all that stuff. That is actually referring to how the first divot is empty. The poem does uh, correlate to empty divots also, although uh, there is a little bit of ambiguity about uh, what the middle divot is, but uh, that is also empty. The old man uh, goes right next to the peerless one at the far left. And you may have noticed that uh, in the poem it said that uh, between the old man and the prisoner, they could see all. So if they could see all, we can presume that the prisoner is at the far side of the um, divots uh, going on the far right. And then, of course, the sn snake is lying closer to the lady than it is to the old man. So just got to put it in the slot next to the prisoner. So as you can see, uh, the Riddles in this game kind of uh, mask uh, what you need to do with them through a uh, very verbose language. But once you know what you're uh, looking for and you can piece out that it's also, or piece together that's referring to the empty divots also, it's not too difficult to solve this one. Uh, on the lower difficulties, the riddles are actually extremely rudimentary, and many of them often just outright tell you what the solution is, so they're not too hard. Hard riddle mode is where they actually start to get a little bit more difficult. Uh, one thing that I would like to remark on, and uh, before we uh, return to the... Uh, second floor, we just want to grab that first aid kit. Uh, one thing I'd like to remark on is that there is actually a fourth hidden riddle difficulty in this game, the extra difficulty, and the way for unlocking it's a little counterintuitive. Uh, you have to clear all of the previous riddle difficulties, easy, normal, and hard, and then when you start a new file and select hard riddle difficulty, you will get the extra riddle difficulty instead. And then going forward, you can never select extra riddle difficulty. Instead, just each playthrough you do, it'll alternate between hard and extra when you select the hard riddle difficulty option. It's a little strange how they did it, and they kind of removed that concept in Silent Hill 3 and just made the hard riddle difficulty in that game. Uh, they infamously packed it with some of the most obtuse puzzles you will ever see in anything ever. 
but that's for another day. Heading to here, we've got the line house key. There's the note that I mentioned in the previous video letting you know that uh, the key is on the first floor. Now, if you're paying uh, very, very close attention, you can probably uh, hear some whispering, and you can make out uh, some words that he's saying. Uh, I know one of them is like, it says he kills his wife, and it's creepy. But uh, you, you only hear that one time when you first enter that room, and I don't think it ever plays again. Where we actually need to go is going across the balcony. We can get into this room here, room 208, I think it is. Yes, room 208. And inside here, there are two things of note, handgun bullets, but also an apartment stairway key. This will allow us to get out of the Blue Creek Apartments. Now, I don't typically save uh, here, and I try to limit my saves since it's something you're ranked on, and I like to practice as much as I possible for as much as possible for 10-star rankings. But uh, even though I haven't died to what's coming up in quite a while, I just know in recording there's very high chance that I'll screw it up. So we're just going to make a safety save there in case I do, because we've got a boss fight coming up, and uh, there is one thing in particular that makes it tricky. Now, heading out back into the hallway, the stairwell is to the left. As you can see, there are two mannequins, but we can just quickly juke by them. Mannequins will always do a quick swipe when they first activate when you get close to them, so just get in close, let them swipe, then run past. Uh, they're very, they have very slow reactions after the initial swing, so it's pretty easy to avoid them. And once we get into this uh, stairwell, a cutscene and boss fight will immediately start, so that's why I paused it here, so let's go. And our first boss fight of the game is Pyramid Head. We're going to immediately start laying into him with bullets and back up into the wall. And I'm just going to reload out on the field. We're going to run past him, and then we're going to go to the left a little bit, and start firing again, backing up into this corner. Uh, a couple of our shots are missing because James' his aim is pretty bad when he is walking, but it's not a huge deal. Alright, so let me see. For this, I'm going to let the gun run out, and then we're just going to run past. One thing you have to be very, very careful of with Pyramid Head, he has a one-hit kill move. The Executioner Swing it is a vertical overhead strike that he does, and on hard mode, he is extremely fast and extremely accurate with it, and that is... Uh, one of the biggest threats of being killed uh, in the game. And in fact, it is the only true one-hit KO in the game. Uh, much like uh, future games in the series, you cannot be... Uh, uh, whenever you reach, like, the lowest health status, uh, you will always, uh, like, have a last chance hit point. So if you're on, like, slightly red, nothing will one-hit kill you at that point. It'll always bring you down into full red and give you a chance to heal yourself. Executioner Swing bypasses that, it's a true one-hit kill, and in fact it's the only way you can be killed on the beginner difficulty, which otherwise makes James immortal. Pretty interesting at that. Now this fight ends after we shoot a Pyramid Head uh, 50 times. I'm kind of in a bad spot for this, uh, but uh, it shouldn't be too big a deal. So after this next clip, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And once the siren goes, that means he's going to go away little risky uh, going in that corner because he will attack you as he's leaving but once the siren starts blare blaring that means pyramid head is going to leave and we just have to wait for him to finish up and go one thing to note about this fight that many guys will mention this fight does have a timed component there is a five minute timer that starts when you go in and if that five minutes elapses pyramid head will just leave however i really couldn't recommend doing the fight this way uh you're just bound to get hit after a while, especially on hard mode where he's a lot faster. And really, what else are you going to use your ammo for? You may as well just use the 50 bullets and get him out of here and save yourself some troubles. Like, why, why, you know, go for like four minutes and then accidentally get hung up on a wall and get hit by the executioner swing? Once Pyramid Head has formally left, uh, the water will drain. The door back into Blue Creek will also unlock, but we don't have anything we want to get there. So let's just get on out of here, get away from these loud industrial noises. And back out into the streets of Silent Hill proper. 
actually really glad that I managed to get through that without getting hit at all. Uh, sometimes I get hung up on the walls and I take a horizontal swing. Another attack that Pyramid Head can do in that fight is he can grab you and choke you. He very rarely does that, usually only if he gets you backed up against a corner. Sometimes he'll do that. And you can break out of that choke just by mashing like buttons and uh, rotating the analog stick really fast. Heading out into this alleyway, there's a first aid kit for us to grab. There's a couple more items, but they're further on down, so let's uh, get out towards those. Uh, it's actually really nice to be back out in the streets. Don't have to rely on my flashlight to see things. You! It was you, wasn't it? You're the one who stepped on my hand. I don't know. Maybe I did. What's a little girl like you doing here, anyway? Huh? Are you blind or something? What's that letter? None of your business. You didn't love Mary anyway. Wait! How do you know Mary's name? Yeesh, what a mouthy kid. But that, uh, James is right. How the heck does she know Mary? I mean, that looks like a really young kid. She can't be any older than eight or nine, and Mary died three years ago, so she, she'd, have been, she'd have been just bigger than a tot by the, to by the time she could have had, even had a chance to meet her. Very strange. That's actually a big question. Unfortunately, she ran off, and James is not exactly athletic enough to mount, uh, climb that wall, and even if he was, uh, probably long since past the point where we could actually catch her by the time he would get over it, so let's just ignore that plot thread for now. Here we are at Rosewater Park. Is this the special place? Hmm. Will our journey be coming to an end already? Well, this would be a very short Let's Play and a very short game if it did, so let, let, let's hope not. Uh, I'm hoping to get some longevity here. I need to get more videos for views for my channel. Heading forward, we got some handgun bullets on the bench over here. And out by uh, these binoculars to look out on the lake, or I guess that's a telescope. We got a health drink. Always could use more supplies. Alright, let's head on down and let's see if Mary's here. Hey, wait a minute. Just uh, going forward a bit. I think I see somebody. Mary? No, you're not. Do I look like your girlfriend? No, my late wife. I can't believe it. You could be her twin. Your face, your voice, just your hair and clothes are different. Her name is Maria. I don't look like a, uh, ghost, do I? See? Feel how warm I am? You're really not Mary. I told you. I'm Maria. Sorry. I was confused. Where are you going? I'm looking for Mary. Have you seen her? Didn't you say she died? Yeah, three years ago. But I got a letter from her. She says she was waiting in our special place. And that's here? Anyway, I haven't seen her. Is this your only special place? with me? You were gonna just leave me? No, but... With all these monsters around? No, I just... I'm all alone here. Everyone else is gone. I look like...
needed her. Don't be ridiculous. So it's okay? Yeah, fine. Well, this is quite the flirtatious woman that we came across, and what more, she happens to be a dead ringer for Mary. Obviously, her hair, she does her hair, her makeup, and more, more uh, obviously, her outfit quite a bit different than the relative conserv relatively conservative Mary. But otherwise, uh, as James pointed out, this woman could very much be her twin, even sounds like her. Uh, but uh, Maria now joins us, and the game has become an escort mission. Although very briefly, it's not on the level of, say, Silent Hill 4 or even Resident Evil 4. But uh, Maria, compared to those games, is quite possibly some of the worst uh, AI I've ever seen for an AI character that follows you in a video game. She has no self-preservation. She will gladly walk into your line of fire, and shooting her is an instant game over, because she instantly dies from any bullets, or even just bashing her with a wooden plank. Instant dies from that. On hard mode, she can only take about four hits, so fighting enemies is extremely dicey with her in the line of fire, so that is something you have to be very mindful of. Fortunately, the section of the game where you have to haul her around is very brief. Speaking of this section of the game that we are in, we are in the lake area of Silent Hill, and I'm going to let you know that this area is absolutely massive, and there are only a handful of places you actually need to go and see. And in fact, uh, the destination we want to go to, Pete's Bolorama, will progress the game and skip over almost all of it. Uh, what you're supposed to probably do is go up Nathan Avenue to get to the hotel, but, uh, well, the... Well, we'll, we'll go over that, because we are going to do that, because there is something that awaits you at the end of that road, but it is a very long road and a complete waste of time. Also, sorry for the siren in the background. You know, sometimes that happens. So uh, I really wouldn't recommend just going for it, but uh, just to do what the intended route is, uh, we will uh, do that. Now that we've gotten through that boss fight, I'm not going to be super concerned about my ammo. We do want plenty of it for the upcoming area, but as far as boss fights go, we've kind of finished up what we need handgun ammo for. Uh, even though Maria is very slow and has no self-preservation, the enemies are also pretty slow, so we can just run past them and she'll be fine. You, you don't have to worry about her getting hung up on them and getting beaten. And besides, it's mostly mannequins, like, there's the occasional lying figure who are a lot more threatening. Even though they're, like, the lowest tier enemy in the game, uh, they are not all that threatening. Or they are, uh, I'm trying to rethink this. Okay, uh, lying figures are, like, introduced as the weakest enemy in the game. But honestly, they're, uh, they're slightly more threatening than uh, the mannequins, who are uh, probably the weakest enemy in the game. They go down the least amount of gunfire, and uh, they do not... Uh, do much damage, and they're very slow, only have a melee attack, so nothing to worry about with the manigans. Uh, the lying figure is a little bit more threatening, but again, as long as we keep a wide angle around them, we can just easily go past them. We got an iron pipe, or a lead pipe, or a steel pipe, steel pipe, from that car there, another melee weapon, an upgrade over the wooden plank. Uh, this one, I can actually think of quite a few places where you can put it, put it to good use, although we should have enough handgun ammo that I'll probably never will have to bust out, but there is one moment in the game where it is extremely useful, which I'll be demonstrating. Aside from that, there are a couple of other supplies, uh, handgun bullets and health drinks that we can get in the gas station, so good place to stop here. Uh, if you go into the uh, parking area of Jack's Inn, you can find a save point on one of the cars there, but that's the only thing of note in that area. So like I said, uh, what I guess you're supposed to do is figure that going up Nathan Avenue will get you to the Lakeview Hotel, but we're going to find that there's a complete dead end there. But just to show off everything in the game, we're going to go that way, and kind of wish I didn't have to because it's a very long and boring, but there's a couple of interesting things to see along the way. One thing we're probably going to see, uh, yep, <laughs> uh, this is pretty funny. It's probably supposed to be surprising, but it's just kind of silly. Uh, mannequins will get yucked out at you uh, <laughs> from the woods. Uh, and when you're playing, like, uh, the Enhanced Edition or the uh, HD version, you can very clearly see that the mannequins are actually just kind of floating in the air over the banister, and then they just fly out at you. It's pretty silly. So, the first thing to remark on here is the Silent Hill Historical si Society. Uh, there is a road leading to, out to a boat dock, but James has no interest in going out towards that. If we go up to the Historical Society itself, we will find out that it's locked, but 
because it specifically says it's locked, that implies that we can unlock it later, so we better keep that in mind. There is another mannequin, but they have uh, quite a bit of downtime before they actually get up, so again, it's only lightly surprising, and honestly, oh right, I, I uh, turned the radio off. Uh, let's turn that back on. At this point, uh, we don't really need to worry about stealth anymore, so we can bring the radio back on, get those uh, nice uh, spooky static noises. <clears throat> Get a little bit of ambient noise to break up me yammering in your ear, you know? And at the end of this road, we find a couple of things. First off, uh, there is some ammo for us. Always nice, so not a completely wasted trip, I suppose. We don't have to kill anything. And there's a dead body with a map here. So... This is the map that indicates to you that the Bulldorama is important. Uh, I, I, I guess they just assume players would think nothing of that and just walk by it, but if you check the door, you will honestly just get the cutscene that progresses the game out of nowhere. And yeah, this road is a complete dead end, so otherwise a complete waste of time to come this way. Got some ammo, got a map, but uh, you know we could have just stopped at the Bulldorama and saved ourselves the trip. So now we've got a bit of a walk back and no particularly threatening enemies to worry about. Some more getting through thrown out of the woods, but again, it's kind of still... Oh, even in this version of the game, you can kind of see that they're just they're just kind of hanging there. As you can see, like, uh, Maria, even the, though uh, she's very slow, she visibly cannot be seen with James running here, she's just fine. The enemies are equally sluggish and are no threat to her as long as you keep moving. One thing I want to keep a... Uh, let you know is that uh, escorting Maria does actually contribute to one of the endings that you can get into this game. Now, the most basic things that do that uh, affect the Maria ending, if you stay close to her, if you make sure she avoids damage, and if you don't bump into her, you can run into Maria and give her like a little push that will make her stumble. Uh, that will uh, keep Maria affectionate towards James and contribute towards an ending you can get. However, that is not the only thing you can do to get that ending, and honestly, the other things that you can do are very very easily spammable and are by far the easiest way to get that ending, so nothing you really have to worry about. You do not have to be super obsessive about uh, protecting Maria if you want to get every ending in the game. Hey, health drink. I never noticed this one was here. Score. So, okay, yeah, this wasn't a complete waste of trip. More sirens, sorry. And with that all said and done, let's just head out uh, or head towards the door and enter the bowling alley. Maybe, uh, you know, bowl a few uh, sets. I'll wait here. I hate bowling. I didn't come here to play, you know. Hurry back, okay? Did I say sets? I, I think, uh, like, games of bowling, uh, the proper terminology is frames. I haven't done any bowling in years, so I, I'm not up to, or I'm not like, fresh on the terminology. Now, if you go forward into the bowling alley, you'll find this door is locked, so our only option is to take the side door over here. So what'd you do? Robbery? Murder? Nah, nothing like that. Huh, you're just a gutless fatso. What'd you have to say that for? I thought you said the cops were after you. No, I just ran because I was scared. I don't know what the cops are doing. But if you did something bad, why don't you just say you're sorry? Well, I guess I run away a lot too. It's no good. They wouldn't listen. Nobody will ever forgive me. Find the lady you're looking for? What's her name? Mary? Hmm, so it seems like uh, Eddie knows that little girl. Let's see if we can get some more information out of him. James, we met in the apartment building? Yeah, I remember, but... Uh... Are you alone here, Eddie? 
Um, no. Bye bye. Wait, come back. Eddie, let's go after her. Huh? Laura? Well, why? Laura, is that her name? That's what she said. This town is full of monsters. How can you sit there and eat pizza? She said she was fine by herself. She said a fatso like me would just slow her down. Forget you. Uh, I, I just love how indignant James sounds there. Well, well, the voice acting in this game is good. It's pretty good. Uh, one, two uh, particular examples I can think of much later in the game that I'll definitely draw attention to. But yeah, we got that girl's name, Laura. And the connection between Eddie and Laura isn't really explained much in the game itself. However, supplemental material reveals that uh, Laura actually hitched into town with Eddie, and that's why they know each other and seem to be relatively friendly with each other. Uh, speaking of which, that leads into my next thing, the pizza. This is one of the most common things people joke about in this game. Uh, you know, Silent Hill is obviously an abandoned town with monsters, so a lot of people are like, where the heck did Eddie get that pizza? A bunch of joking theories about why I got it. I actually have a relatively straightforward answer to this question. <laughs> Not that I'm, like, trying to establish myself as, like, some logical master here, but to me, it seems as simple as just he brought it with him in his van. Uh, that van at the parking lot at the uh, Toluca Lake Overlook uh, by James's car, that's Eddie's van. And remember, the only reason we can't go back to that area is because James refuses to. Eddie, by contrast, doesn't really have any reason not to, so presumably he just had the pizza in the van, he went back to get it, and then I guess he decided to go bowl. Uh, if we walk up to Eddie again. Who is that girl, anyhow? I don't know. All I know is her name. I swear. A little bit more information, but not anything too interesting. One last thing to do in the bowling alley. On this uh, aisle right here, third from the right, you go all the way to the end, you find a hidden pack of handgun bullets. Not super critical, but uh, on a new playthrough where we don't have any bullet adjust to wor work with, and especially into the next area that we're going into, every little bit of ammunition can help. So uh, grab it for, uh, you know, the sake of having the ability to actually kill things that we come across. Let's get out into the uh, bowling alley parking lot and see if Maria was able to stop that girl. Did a little girl run out of here? Yeah, she was too fast for me. Aren't you gonna go after her? All right, so it looks like uh, Maria was not fast enough to catch a small girl, so we have to be the man in this situation and go after her. Uh, how exactly James attempt is going to solve this situation, I'm not sure, but I'm sure we can catch Laura. Just look at how fast he can go. He can sprint for like 10 seconds, and then he slows down to a jog that's only slightly faster than my walking speed. Anyway, heading into this alley over here, uh, we just want to hang a left as we go in. Whenever I play this game, sometimes I just go right and like, oh wait, this is the wrong way. Heading to the end of this alleyway, going left though. She went through there. Is there any other way? Yeah, there is. Right through there. I don't know, James. I, I think you could fit through there if you just, uh, you know, suck in a little bit. You know, it doesn't look like the most impossible thing in the world. But uh, I guess that's beneath James. All right, let's go in here. It's no good. It's locked. I've really, uh, one of the things I remember from uh, this really famous uh, plot analysis featured on GameFAQs from a guy called Silent Pyramid was uh, going over this scene, and he, and he, he was just going over a bit where it's not clear if uh, Maria used multiple keys that were uh, stored on her personage, or if she just had a single key and was just screwing with James and acting like she had multiple keys. I just thought that was a funny thing to debate with yourself over. 
So it's such a minor scene. But yeah, for reasons that we can probably only use our detective skills to figure out, looks like uh, Maria has keys to the strip club of Silent Hill, Heaven's Night. Pretty good name for a strip club, honestly. In here, we got a first aid kit, and not much else to really uh, go over or pick up in here. So we may as well just head on out. Has a really nice song that plays in the background, though, that you hear for only 10 seconds. Uh, really uh, nice to listen to on the OST. Strongly recommend checking out the OST for this game. It's available on, you know, YouTube, Spotify, all the places you could listen to music. Very, very good soundtrack, and uh, I used to listen to it all the time when I was a teenager. Loved it. Still do, honestly. Alright, so heading down this street. See if we can't catch up with that girl finally. Uh, it seems a little hopeless. Yeah, she has to have gotten... Oh, hey! Over there! Must have slowed down a little bit. Looks like she's going into the hospital. Brookhaven Hospital. Not to be confused with Alcamilla Hospital from the previous game, this hospital is more of a mental hospital, although it does have surgical facilities. Uh, knowing the kind of town that Silent Hill uh, is, and it's a mental hospital with surgical facilities, I kind of suspect there is some uh, archaic treatment for mental illness going on in this place, and a lot of the documents that we'll find further out uh, strengthen that impression, but uh, we'll be getting that into to that in the next video as uh, Brookhaven Hospital Probably uh, one of the most difficult areas in the game uh, on hard mode, uh, and for reasons we will be getting into shortly. Fortunately, when we start out after grabbing the map, we just go into this room, we can save immediately, and that is where we'll end this video, because again, Brookhaven Hospital, one of the major areas of Silent Hill 2, and it is a fairly long one, so we got quite a bit to do when we get into the next video. I'll save all that for next time, though. As always, hope you enjoyed watching, hope to see you then. Until then, though. Goodbye.